Hey guys, welcome to the Explanation Pro. In this video, I am gonna talk about the 1999 war drama film, Jakob the Liar. As usual, there will be spoilers ahead, so take them with a grain of salt and let's get started. The movie begins in Poland during the winter of early 1944. A Polish Jewish shopkeeper named Jakob Haim is talking to himself as he sits down outside his house, saying about the death of Hitler that will happen on a Jewish holiday. He then reveals how they survived during the German invasion, wherein they lived in a ghetto full of barbed wire to shut them down. Unfortunately, Jakob and his fellow citizens were isolated from the rest of the world for years without news. As Jakob faces the ghetto wall and continuously thinks about the memoirs inside the ghetto, he suddenly sees a single sheet of newspaper levitating in the air. Jakob then tries catching it but fails to get it as the newspaper keeps moving away from him. Later at night, a random man discreetly takes a young Jewish girl named Lena to escape from an extermination camp deportation train. Despite Lena's mother reminding the man that it's dangerous, he still grabs Lena's arm and pushes her to slip through a hole inside the train. As the train leaves, Lena immediately stands up and picks up the photo that her mother dropped earlier. Meanwhile, Jakob is still eager to catch the newspaper when suddenly a sentry focuses the searchlight on him. Jakob then halts immediately as the German soldier suddenly accuses him of escaping from the ghetto. Due to that, the sentry reminds Jakob that what he's doing is punishable by death for a Jew to be in the streets after a curfew. However, Jakob attempts to talk with the sentry, cautiously telling him that he doesn't think the siren has gone off yet. Due to that, the sentry summons Jakob to the German headquarters. It turns out, the sentry falsely accused Jakob of being out after curfew. Leaving him no choice, Jakob nervously walks toward the commander's office. Upon his arrival, Jakob patiently waits for the commander when suddenly he overhears a German radio broadcast speaking about Soviet offensives. From there, the radio broadcaster talks about succeeding in driving back the Russian forces near Bezenica during a hard-fought defensive battle. Suddenly, a German official enters the office, so Jakob clarifies that he's waiting for the commander for his proper punishment. However, it turns out that the German official he's talking to is the commander. So, Jakob explains, saying that he hadn't heard the siren for it was not 8 o'clock p.m. yet. Unfortunately, the commander confirms Jakob is correct, and the sentry only makes fun of him. Due to that, the commander gives him a chance to go back to the ghetto instead of giving him a punishment. Though his house is 10 minutes away from the German headquarters, Jakob has no choice but to run. However, Jakob gets locked outside after coming out from the headquarters. So, he has no choice but to hide in the train line where deportation trains are parked. Suddenly, Lena appears at Jacob's back and halts him from getting across the gate. Shocked, Jakob shouts as Lena tells him to wait for the searchlight to go by. Afterward, Lena immediately tells Jakob to watch out as the searchlight will point in their direction. After that, she tries to request to Jakob if she may come with him. Fortunately, Jakob agrees, and they both run to escape from the searchlight. Afterward, Jakob and Lena pass through the locked gate by slipping through the broken barbed wire. Once inside, Jakob bids goodbye to Lena when suddenly he learns that she will only stay at the tram because she has no house to stay in. Due to that, Jakob takes Lena with him. Afterward, he puts Lena in a secret attic so that she won't get caught by some nosy neighbors that may denounce Jakob. The following day, Jakob goes to Kowalski's office, only to find out that Kowalski's trying to hang himself inside. Due to that, Jakob immediately shares his information and sparks rumors that there is a secret radio within the ghetto. However, Kowalski fails to believe him, so Jakob suddenly gives Kowalski a deal that he'll eat Jacob's pancakes that he wants in his cafe if he gives him a free shave. Afterward, Jakob immediately gets to his job, where they will work for the Germans. Upon their arrival, Jakob approaches Misha to take him as his partner. But then, a random Jewish man named Samuel favors Jakob to choose him as his partner because he needs to eat. Leaving him no choice, Jakob agrees and starts working while he lets Samuel rest. While working, Jakob suddenly sees Misha discreetly ripping the wood floor inside the boxcars. So, he tries to halt him, but Misha is eager to wreak havoc. Jakob then desperately requests Misha to stop what he's doing when suddenly Samuel informs them that a German soldier is coming. Due to that, Misha immediately hides beside the door to kill the German once he enters. Panicking, 
Yakub has left no choice but to take the chance to share the information about Russians that are already in Bezanica, Poland. Yet, Misha refutes, saying that he heard Hitler's applying to be a chief rabbi in Berlin. However, Jakob still convinces Misha that what he's saying is confirmed by giving him evidence that he heard it on the radio. Fortunately, Misha finally believes, and Jakob prevents him from attacking a German soldier. After the work, Misha suddenly hits Jakob on the nape of his neck, happily celebrating the good news he heard from him. However, Jakob clarifies that he has no radio, only saying it to keep him from getting shot. But then, Misha already marks his belief that Jakob has a radio. Pissed off, Jakob tells him that he's only lying. Technically, it shows that having a radio is punishable by death, so Misha assures Jakob that he can trust him with his secret. Once inside his house, Jakob goes to Lena's room to give her supper. Meanwhile, Misha immediately returns to their house and informs his girlfriend, Rosa, about the good news. Afterward, he directly approaches Rosa's father, Mr. Frankfurter, to request that he's already prepared to help him with the overcrowding of their apartment. Technically, he's asking for the hand of their daughter, Rosa. However, Mr. Frankfurter declines his request due to the German invasion, so Misha clarifies that the war will end soon. He then reveals that the Russian Red Army is in Bezanica tonight, closer to their location. Unfortunately, Mr. Frankfurter still doesn't believe Misha, so he finally tells the truth that Jakob has a radio to confirm the news. Shocked, Mr. Frankfurter immediately takes his radio to the drawer and tries to destroy it. But Mrs. Frankfurter halts him, so Mr. Frankfurter explains that it will be dangerous for them if the Gestapo finds that Jakob has a radio. Technically, they will also be affected as the Gestapo will search for Jakob and the whole ghetto inhabitants radios. The following day, Jakob enters Kowalski's barber shop for a free shave, only to find out that his secret about the radio has been disseminated to the ghetto inhabitants. Due to that, Jakob immediately comes out of the barber shop to find Misha. Once outside, he aggressively scolds Misha for letting Kowalski know about the radio. Kowalski is the type of person who carelessly spreads information to their neighbors. However, Misha disregards Jacob's reaction and even continues to ask for more information about the Russians. Due to that, Jakob spreads another lie, in which he tells Misha that he heard a program of dance music. Unfortunately, everyone in the ghetto already knows about Jacob's news. After hesitating, Jakob decides to spread hope throughout the ghetto inhabitants. Fortunately, Samuel chooses to communicate with them instead of Jakob. He then says that they will finally get saved by the Russians. Later, Jakob and the other ghetto inhabitants watch Herschel dies after he forces them to believe the voices he heard from the boxcars. Unfortunately, Jacob's lies keep hope and humor alive among the isolated ghetto inhabitants. The following day, Jakob starts another day to work when suddenly Misha approaches him right after he comes out of his house. Misha then asks if Jakob listens to the radio and if there is any progress at the front. Tired of saying that he's only lying, Jakob then favors Misha to stop torturing him by asking questions regarding the Russians. Afterward, Jakob takes his meal break at work when suddenly the Jewish men approach him to tell them about the Russians. Leaving him no choice, Jakob continues to tell the optimistic, whimsical tales that he allegedly heard from his secret radio. On the other hand, Mr. Frankfurter encourages other Jewish men to stop Jakob from spreading lies. Later, Jakob talks to his invisible wife, Hannah, while washing his clothes outside his house. Jakob then asks her what he will invent tomorrow so that he can still give hope and humor to his neighbors. Afterward, he visits Lena and brings her some turnip soup. However, he finds out that Lena's getting sick because of the mushrooms they ate yesterday. On the other hand, Misha eventually sees Jakob outside his house, thinking he might listen to the radio. So, he quickly grabs his coat and leaves the apartment. Once outside, Mr. Frankfurter also sees Misha leaving to follow Jakob. So, he immediately informs his wife that Misha has left Rosa to run around with Jakob. However, it turns out that Jacob's only seeking help from the professor to treat Lena. But then, Misha falsely believes that Jakob has received a message from London and he will inform the professor. Fortunately, the professor allows Jakob to give him medicine in exchange for good news. Meanwhile, Mr. Frankfurter forces Kowalski to tell Jakob to destroy his radio before it destroys them. Unfortunately, he has other beliefs, wherein he tells Kowalski that Jacob's preparing an uprising with Misha. 
As Jakob returns to his house with the professor, Lena, on the other hand, catches Mr. Frankfurter and his men trespassing into their home. Once inside, Lena immediately informs Jakob that there are thieves in their apartment, but Jakob refuses to believe her. Afterward, the professor begins checking up on Lena while Jakob watches them. Suddenly, Jakob finds out that Lena's warning is true, wherein he catches Mr. Frankfurter, Kowalski, and the other men quietly going out to his apartment. Due to that, he clarifies to them that he will not destroy the radio because no one in the ghetto has committed suicide yet. The following day, Jakob immediately hides Lena after hearing the Gestapo banging on the door. However, Jakob finds out that it's only Misha, trying to force him to listen to the radio. So, Jakob only pushes him away. Suddenly, Jakob and the Jewish men plan to organize, thinking that Russia will arrive anytime soon. Due to that, they choose Jakob to be their leader. So, Jakob informs the men to wait for the signal before they attack despite feeling worried that it will turn out as a massacre because they believe in Jacob's lies. However, the Gestapo suddenly bangs on the door while they are having a meeting. It turns out, Gestapo is only looking for a professor to treat German General Hartloff. Then as soon as they take the professor, Jakob and the Jewish men get out of the room. Upon his arrival, the professor suddenly makes a deal with Hartloff, saying that if he saves Hartloff's life, he'll liquidate the ghetto. But instead of agreeing, Hartloff reveals that they finally learn of the mythical radio. Then he points out that they knew the Jewish inhabitants were listening to the BBC and dreaming about resistance. Due to that, the professor quickly drinks the poison before Hartloff forces him to talk about the resistance hero who dares operate the uprising. Pissed off, Hartloff immediately commands his men to begin a search for the radio. Meanwhile, Jakob suddenly sees the German soldiers beginning to look for a criminal terrorist who's hiding a radio. Then he hears that if the man responsible for the crime brings himself, the German soldiers will spare the lives of the hostages. But if not, the hostages will be shot in reprisal. Leaving him no choice, Jakob finally decides to surrender himself to the Germans and shares the last moment with his great friend, Kowalski. Jakob then reveals that all his news is a lie and that his radio doesn't exist. Afterward, Jakob visits Lena in the attic to bid goodbyes. After that, Jakob goes to Misha to give him a favor to go into the attic, where he'll find Lena. It turns out, Jakob is finally saying his last words once he never comes back by morning. Later, Jakob finally surrenders himself and gets inside the German headquarters. During interrogation, Jakob suffers from torture as he reveals to the police commander that his radio is in the police commander's office. Due to that, the police commander learns that Jakob heard the news through his office radio. Pissed off, the police commander commands Jakob to announce that the radio and the resistance were lies publicly. In return for his confession, he will not get shoot. The movie ends with Jakob refusing to tell the truth as he presents himself to the public. He then attempts to make his speech when suddenly Hartloff shoots him to death. Afterward, Jakob says, post-mortem, it is revealed that the ghetto's residents were deported and never seen again. However, the ending tells otherwise, wherein the deportation train carrying the Jewish prisoners to the death camps suddenly gets halted by Russian troops. Fortunately, the occupants are finally released because of the Russian Red Army. That's all for today's video and thanks for watching it. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, let me know in the comments below which movie you want me to cover in the next video. Until next time, take care and stay tuned.